New York City may be the city that never sleeps, but York, England is the city where spirits never rest. York is one of the most haunted cities in the world, with over 140 ghosts and 504 reported hauntings. Founded by the Romans in 71 CE, the city had a bloody and turbulent history that included Viking invasions, Norman conquest, the Black Death, and the English Civil War. Today, strangers, we're going to tell you a few stories from the city's dark history that has left restless spirits, poltergeists, and ghouls lingering within the walls of the historic city. The Shambles is York's most famous street, and today you will find a nice mix of shops, restaurants, and pubs that you can visit and enjoy. However, the design of this unique narrow street and the Elizabethan building surrounding it are the result of the street originally being the city's butcher block. The cobbled channel in the middle of the street between the raised pavement was designed to dispose of the blood, guts, and waste that was left flowing through the street. The overhanging buildings were designed to allow greater floor and living space above the butcher stalls, but they also provided the perfect shelter to protect the hanging meat from the sun and rain. You can still see the hanging hooks left in some of the buildings, along with the lingering spirits of the past. Many of the shops and shambles claim to have their own ghosts, but one that appears regularly for over a hundred years was a tall, well-dressed gentleman wearing a bowler hat. He was often seen standing outside or in a shop window from the 1800s until around the 1940s. He would often wave or smile to those who caught his eye, but would quickly vanish if someone tried to speak to him. Strangely, he has not been seen since the end of World War II. Sometimes the headless ghost of Thomas Percy has been seen staggering down the shambles, still searching for his lost head. In the Earl Grey tea rooms, the apparition of an older man sitting at the corner table is often spotted. Some ladies have felt a child's hand grab them while in the women's bathroom, only to discover they were alone. The remains of St. Crux Church now form a chapel in the shambles that has its own share of strange occurrences. A tall man is often spotted staring out the windows in the early mornings, despite the church being empty. Late one night, a policeman passing through the church heard funeral music coming from inside. He went to investigate and found the doors to be unlocked and could hear phantom people leaving the building, but no one was inside the dark empty church except for him. Opposite of the shambles is the Golden Fleece, a pub and inn that claims to be the most haunted pub in York. It was built in the early 1500s, and employees report feeling, hearing, and seeing unexplainable things when they're alone in the pub. Rooms are often known to become ice cold as a strange unseen presence passes through. An apparition is often seen moving across the bar, along with the sound of unknown footsteps and old keys rattling. A Canadian airman staying at the inn at the end of World War II fell from one of the upper windows, killing him when he hit the street below. Ever since, a strange shadow was seen roaming the bedroom from which he fell. The spirit of Lady Alice Pickett can be seen wandering the halls and staircases of the inn during the early hours of the night. She was the wife of John Pickett, the Lord Mayor of York, who owned the premise and lived in the residence next door. The Golden Fleece has been featured on countless television programs investigating the strange activity found inside the old pub and inn. One theory behind the Golden Fleece's hauntings is that it's the result of the building sitting at the end of the shambles where all the blood and unwanted butchered waste would flow down to and under the building, forever leaving behind the unwanted feeling of death and decay beneath the Golden Fleece. The York Minster is the largest Gothic cathedral in Northern Europe, and one of the most haunted famous buildings in York. So famous that some will do whatever they can not to miss a church service, even after death. One parishioner who died in 1702 can still be seen on occasion sitting in his favorite pew and intently listening to the sermons on Sunday. One winter night in 1879, a policeman and his dog were on patrol in the New York Minister when he had a strange, unexplained encounter. They were sitting on a bench when his dog jumped up and bolted away. The policeman hurried after his dog, but was shocked when he saw an apparition under the North Tower. It was a shaft of blue light, about the height of a man, which passed slowly to the great west door before gliding up the center side. He followed the light to the east corner, where it remained for almost ten minutes before disappearing through the stones in the wall. The policeman found his dog cowering by the main door. 
The dog bolted as soon as the door was open and would never again enter the church. In the 1920s, two ladies touring the York Minster were separated from their group. Walking alone, they encountered a man in naval attire who came over and whispered to one before disappearing. Supposedly, the naval man was the lady's brother that she had made a pact with that whoever died first would prove to the other that the afterlife existed. Her brother was killed at sea and came back to tell her that there was indeed an afterlife. The final story is the most heartbreaking and unfortunate. It may not be the scariest haunting, but it shows the extreme measures people resort to to save themselves. Five Cottage Street is now the eternal home of the spirit of a young girl who frantically wanders the upstairs, searching for a way to escape. The Black Death ravaged York's population during the late 1300s, and her family and the house had slowly watched all of their loved ones pass away from one of the deadliest plagues on Earth. One night, before one more tragedy occurred, this young girl was being tucked into bed when her parents noticed a large red ring around the back of her neck. Distraught at the potential first sign of the horrible plague, they tucked her into bed and packed her things and left York never to return. The last thing they did was the most horrendous of all. They locked all the doors to the home and painted a red cross on the door, the mark of the plague, so that residents in the city knew to quarantine the home and not enter. The girl awoke and quickly found she was locked upstairs and all alone. She desperately screamed and banged on the windows day after day for help. The house was just around the corner from the York Minister. Despite people going to the church each Sunday and to the market outside of the home, no one dared to enter it before they lifted the quarantine. They finally entered three weeks after the screams had stopped. They found the girl was not bloated from infection or disease, but that her body was just skin and bones where she had slowly starved to death. The mark on her neck had been the early onset of measles and not the plague. So many people heard her screams each day and night, but they did nothing to help her. Remember this story when you see someone in need. You never know what difference your actions can make when everyone around you is too worried about themselves to help those who need it the most. Which one of these stories was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to check us out on our social media, as well as our new gaming channel, The Strangest Gaming. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, stay strange.